This is Francisco. I'm here with my co-host Tom Sullivan, and we have in our studio John Crondis with his Elvis hit-making team, bringing back the Memphis sound. And the song you just heard was Please Don't Stop Loving Me with John singing, along with the Jordan Airs. John and the Elvis hit-making team includes the TCB band, the American Studios band, DJ Fontana, the Jordanaires, the Stamps, the Imperials, Sweet Inspirations, Elvis's Horn Section, and many others. Please don't stop loving me, darling you always be mine alone. Mine alone. Mine alone. Tom, as we bring on John, let's listen to the song The End with John and the Elvis hit making team. back to John a little bit, yeah, uh, who, we... whose career we're very, very interested in. Now, at the beginning of the program, we played a song that I believe was written by your father that was recorded well, by Elvis Presley. Could at you... the very beginning, it wasn't written by the, the first song was uh, actually one of the new tracks, one of the very new recordings that's not even a week old that I, I sang with the Jordanaires. And uh, that's how that this was... whole project started was my oh. new recording, which... They played second and blended into that, The End, right. which uh, my father, Jimmy Crondis, wrote uh, in 1959. The first recording was by Earl Grant. Yeah, I've heard that recording. Beautiful, beautiful. And that, w- that was a pretty big hit, wasn't it? I mean, well, I, Went to number one yes. all over the world. Yes, it was a great, great record, and I'm familiar with his recording of it, but I know, it, but I know Elvis recorded it as well. Elvis actually sang my dad's song, and it's really very special to me, and that's, uh, I think, a great part in spirit. And maybe in God's plan and fate, what brought all these people together was that song. Elvis chose the end and and serenaded Priscilla, his future wife, with my father's song, The End, in Germany on the piano on the very night they met. Isn't that amazing? And you want to keep that that whole thing alive, right? And resurrect that, right? I have no choice at this point. No turning back. (laughs) No turning back. It's, It's wonderful. I want to hear a little bit of that. 
uh, song again to remind the listeners of it. And we're going to play it talking about the end, you know, uh, and the beginning. This, and as before mentioned earlier, the cycle of life and everything that goes and happens, comes back around. And Now, you and your, this is, this is, you've revitalized yourself as well as revitalizing uh, the Elvis band members and the songwriters and, you know, the, the you know, the Jordanaires and, and all of this. You must feel like a, a lot of responsibility, well, right, about this? Tre- tremendous responsibility and, and the power of this project uh, it's like a weight that's 15 tons on my shoulders. I have the Jordanaires, Michael Black from the Jordanaires just last week in the studio. It was very, very emotional. Uh, everyone's come back together again, and all of Elvis's people in spirit to sing and to give him new life. As Joe Esposito said, when he heard this and, and heard my first recordings, he grabbed my arm in Los Angeles. They played the first recording I did with the TCB band, he, and he closed his eyes, grabbed my arm, and twisted it and said, I thought I heard Elvis. And now, Joe Esposito, he was Elvis's road manager, was he? Or He, he was uh, arguably, as they say, Elvis's best friend in life, right. and the other being George Klein. He was, with George Klein, the best man at Elvis's wedding and road manager for 20 years. And Joe uh, sat there at the piano as Elvis sang this very same beautiful song, The End, to Priscilla, and serenaded her with this this very same song. Beautiful song. Now, Joe is still alive. Joe knows of all your efforts. Oh, absolutely. He's He's been at almost every recording session. And every time we talk, John, and and we have Noble here, too, uh, every time I speak to you, Noble, and to you, John, it's like a new, another person that's involved that, you know, wonderful. You well, know? I have two personalities. You're getting the good one now. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I meant that you're talking about, like, uh, Evans. You, you, you bring up all these people, and there were so many people involved. Although John Crombus um, is, is not an imitator of Elvis, he's his own man, and he writes his own songs, let that be known. This is a continuation of the Memphis sound and not an imitation of Elvis, so that we want this song and the, and the sound to live on forever, and so that people will um, remember Elvis as well in, the, in his light. He was a great man and a blessed man, but uh, John here is going to continue that legacy, and um, we expect many great things. And, in fact, we have some performances coming up in the very near future. And um, especially at the, uh, we expect to be at the Fox with the Casino in the next few months. So hopefully all of you people will be able to come and attend. Do you have a website by any chance or uh, where people could keep uh, up yes. with yes. what you're up to? We, we have a few, a few places where fans can connect with us. Uh, the most popular these days is Facebook, which... In seconds, uh, they posted a, a press release about this very same show on Facebook, which reached thousands of people. So you can connect with us. Uh, there's two sites, and one being Elvis Hitmaking Team on Facebook, and then the other band page under my name, John Crondes. That's and, how it's and spelled spell out. K- K-R-O-N-D-E-S. John okay. Crondes and or Elvis Hitmaking Team. Thirdly, uh, we have a, an official website, which is hitmakingteam.com, www.hitmakingteam.com. You know, I want to... Uh, follow up on what uh, Noble was saying. I think it's very uh, fair and appropriate to say that you're not an Elvis imitator because not, not it's at all. not at all. At the same time, and not taking anything away from being a wonderful songwriter, musician, and everything, you do sound like Elvis. And, it, uh, and it's not in a creepy way or anything, but you do sound like Elvis and it, it engenders... Uh, all those wonderful memories of Elvis. Elvis and, and I have an agreement. Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, I'm not going to tell you what that is, but we have an agreement. We, we want to go to another. Uh, yeah. We uh, we want to. Uh, I said not creepy. <laughs> no, no. It's, it's anyway, a, no. As we uh, explain, an eerily beautiful thing. Yeah. Very yeah. good. Well, you know what? I do. And Elvis, the- if you're listening, we'd be happy to have you call in. The number is nine one four six three six zero one one zero because you never know. 
You, let let, me, you know I, what? I, you, I, I, I correct them all, Fran. <laughs> when they say that you sound like Elvis, I say no. I say Elvis sounds like me. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. <laughs> yes. All right. He, he just came before you, that's all. Right. You know? yes. But uh, I also, for what it's worth, you're a very wonderful guy. You know what I mean? Thank you. And uh, you have a wonderful spirit about you. And I want to convey that to the listeners. So they first you want to call in. They want to request this CD so we can give it to them, right? So we want them to call in at 914-636-0110. We want everyone to know that you're going to be back. You're going to be able to be back or you're going to be down they've in Memphis. They've been saying that for years, but I, I keep coming back. <laughs> so our next show, John, we're going to have John has left the, question, the, John has left the, the building. building. The question is <laughs> where you'll find me next. <laughs> All right. And we want to, we're want we going to move on and have some other songs played. Um, so we have Tender Moments is the name of the song, Chuck. I don't have the number written down. You have it. Great. Let's hear a little bit of Tender Moments. Now, prep, prep this on this. This is another beautiful, strange twist of fate. Not only do we have, at this point, ladies and gentlemen, literally every single player, singer, musician, we also have songwriters. Literally everybody that worked with Elvis back together again. These are the very first, very first commercial recordings in 37 years. There has never been another recording. What we have that's been brewing, and, and uh, it's, it's a beautiful thing, and it all started with that recording, that new recording of the end, Tender Moments is a song written by Paul Evans. And uh, Paul Evans had five number one hits with Elvis. He wrote I Gotta Know, Something Blue from uh, That's the Way It, it Is, uh, sure. the documentary. He wrote the song that you see Elvis performing with the band called The Next Step is Love. He wrote Bobby Vinton, oh, Roses Are Red. Great, great song. Wow, Roses Are Red. Roses Are Red, Roses are red yes. he wrote. And this particular song, this gorgeous song, Tender Moments, Presley was holding in his hands, had the, the original demo. When he, when he passed and was intending and was ready to record that particular okay. song. That same demo was given to me by Paul Evans as I was introduced to him by Tom Bones Malone of The Letterman Show who played uh, trombone on, on my first recording of the end and said, hey, you, you kind of sound like Elvis. And uh, <laughs> you know, they, a lot of the musicians right. approached me from that very first recording uh, and said, you know, I, I have this friend who wrote for Elvis. I'd love to introduce you to him. And that's kind of by the way, it's how not- that short form, how that, that happened. That's great. And it's not only the tone and the, the pitch, but it's also your phrasing and your timing. Yes. It's, it's very much like Absolutely. Elvis. And so let's hear Tender Moments. And this is not to be confused with Leave a Tender Moment Alone by Billy Joel. This is better. Yeah. <laughs> Makes life worth living is a tender moments. Thank you, love, for giving me these tender moments. When the first gold wisp of morning finds you soft and still asleep. The sun and I both share a gentle kiss upon your cheek. Tender moments, whoa, tender moments. I love you, sweet child.
That's a great, absolutely beautiful song. And you. you do a wonderful, unbelievable job on it. I want to mention that Kyle Boyko, who's here, uh, boyfriend to my daughter Kelly, has a dad who was born in Russia, lived much of his life, I think, in Russia. Cool. Yeah. And when we were talking, I don't know how it came up, but it came up that he's an Elvis fanatic. Wow. <laughs> yeah. You know? He came to the right and place. We told him about this show. I don't know if he's listening in. You know, I remember hearing that years ago, there was a huge black market in Russia, the old Soviet Union, for rock and roll recordings and particularly Elvis recordings because they weren't allowed to play them years ago on Russian radio. It was considered, you know, evil Western music. But there was a thriving black market and the young people found this stuff and they, they loved it over there too. Oh, Especially absolutely. the writhing and the gyrating that Elvis used to do, right? Well, the Ed, like Sullivan, the Ed show, Sullivan show. Well, you know, when Elvis first started, right. I mean, this is before my time. But, Hound uh, Dog. From what yeah. I'm told, and you could ask Ray Walker, be the perfect source to talk about that. The Jordanaires were on that show with him, but they only could show Elvis from the waist up because the parents right. were in outrage. You know, he was an evil person. Are we person. supposed to call? Are we supposed to call Ray? I, I think okay. you're in. He's, oh, Ray's on the line. Okay. Patch him in to us. Hello, Ray. I'm... F I'm Francisco. I'm here with John and Noble and Tom Sullivan. I got my daughter Kelly here. We've got Pete here and uh, Kyle and Jacqueline. So we got a full group ready to hear you. How you doing, Ray? Yes, hello. Hi, how are you? Now, Ray, you are you are a member of the Jordanaires, for people who don't know that, correct? Yeah, nearly 55 years. And, of course, there's no more Jordanaires right now because Gordon had that fixed or whatever. Um, the owners passed away. There wouldn't be another group called Jordanaires, and that's okay. Now, let me ask you a question. When did you guys first start performing with Elvis Presley? Well, uh, Gordon sang with him on um, in January of 1956 on his first RCA session. That's right, because he originally was at Sun Records, I believe, in Memphis from 54 and 55, and then he went to... Uh, he went to RCA beginning of 56 with, I believe, Chet Atkins was producing those those recordings. And you were on, you were on those sessions? Uh, not on the January 56. I didn't come along till 58. In April of 58. Oh, April. And full-time June 1st, 58. But the other, the, other Jord, the other Jordanaires were on a lot of those early RCA sides. Of course, yeah. It'd be, it would be Gordon and Neil and, um, and Hoyt and Hugh Jarrett. Uh, and then uh, Hugh left in the last uh, 57, and I came on in 58. But on the very first session, uh, Elvis asked for the Jordanaires, and uh, Chet had just uh, signed a new gospel group and wanted to know if he would sing with Ben and Brock Spear. And uh, so he said, well, I've never done that, but I will. And... Uh, when Elvis got there, he didn't like it because he wanted the Jordanaires. He'd listened to us for years and years. And uh, so then he did it again in April with the same three, and Colonel Parker went to Chet and said, Listen, when Elvis asks for something, he gets it. <laughs> so the, so the Jordanaires uh, actually traveled with Elvis on some road shows before the full group recorded with him. Uh, in June of uh, 56 on his next sessions. And that was really the peak of Elvis mania from 56 to 58 when he went in the Army, and so the Jordanaires were right there all that time. Yeah, I did, the, I did the sessions before he went into the Army. He's a good kid, good guy, right. really a good guy. And I want to ask you, what was the magic of Elvis? What was so special? What was the one or two things that stand out in your mind when you were singing about Elvis? Him. Yeah, about Elvis. Well, it'd be the same thing that would hit anybody that would observe. Um, when I met him, we were waiting at the studio. Uh, at my first session, June 10th, 1958. I was turned at like a 45 degree angle from the back door. He came in the load in door, and Gordon says, Here comes Elvis. Well, I turned around, and he had his hand out, and I took his hand. He said, I'm Elvis Presley. I said, I know who you are. I'm Ray Walker. He said, and I know who you are. <laughs> you already done some chicken. And then uh, the look in that man's eyes, if you've got any uh, perception at all, you see he's just, he's just what he wants to be. You can see that he would be easy to get over on because uh, he was, he was low-key 
and very kind to other people wow. at all times. All times. And he did a lot of religious music too. He loved gospel music. And I know the Jordanaires did a lot of a lot of gospel recording with him as well. He made some beautiful gospel recordings. Oh yeah, yeah. And actually, the Jordanaires uh, are called gospel, but they got their start singing spirituals. And there's a big difference in the meaning of a gospel song and a spiritual song. A spiritual, you sing a story, uh, some kind of a story, and you draw the message from the story. But in a gospel song, it's heaven and hell and belief and faith and happiness and rejoicing and all that. I see. It's straight from the gospel. But is, uh, is they a, were known for spirituals. Is a spiritual Jesus. song more like a country song, or does it have its roots no, more no, in no, country? No, no, no. Spiritual is a religious song. It's like Go Down Moses. And, right. Um, but I mean uh, in its root being stories, like, like country. Where it just, uh, it, it just relates a story. I and see. by the way the story comes out, you draw the message from it. And of course, Elvis like, grew up singing in church. The church was very much a part of his life when he was uh, growing up. And you guys all came from that background as well. Uh, that 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 was so much a part of your of your of your life and your faith. Well, yeah. Well, we were first of all, and all four of us, family men and church people, and uh, we we didn't even even till now we don't even feel well known, and that's really dangerous. A lot of times, I'm like a duck. I get up in the day and go out and quack quack. It's a new day, and uh, we we just never went for the star route. They were told early. Back in 1956, when they had Sugar Ree, what a record that was! 56 and 57, with Gordon singing the lead, and um, they told him out of Capitol said, "Now we can go the star route if you want to. But you're already doing some background. If you'll stick to background music, it'll feed you the rest of your life, <laughs> and you won't have to worry about the ups and downs and stardom." So that's what they chose to do. Wow, <laughs> Ray, how is it yep. to perform with? John Crondus. Oh, well, uh, we met John when we were in uh, Las Vegas doing the Patsy Cline story uh, with Sharon Haynes. And uh, I think this is what John said. He was riding down the street, and he looked up uh, on the marquee, and it said Sharon Haynes, the Patsy Cline story uh, with the Jordanaires. Well, he came to meet us, <clears throat> and when he met us, uh, he talked about doing a session. We said, well, yeah, we can, we can do anything we want to during the daytime. So we went to a studio close by and, been, and started recording with him. And he's got the tenacity of a bulldog and a snapping turtle. I mean, <laughs> there's not enough thunder to make him turn loose of what he wants to do. So I'm glad it's good stuff he's wanting to do. <laughs> yeah, very good. Very detailed and very good. And we noticed that to start with, that he, he went to the core of the matter and worked, worked for the good that could come out of his product. Well, it's, uh, it's somewhat like a resurrection, is it, of the spirit of Elvis and the Memphis sound, having John recording these songs again? Is, uh, it, does it, is, it, helping you, is it helping you keep alive not only the memories but further the spirit of all the work that you've been involved in all these years? Oh, you say, uh, does it resurrect memories in me? Yeah. There are always memories. And when he does the songs, the most, the most impressive thing about John's project is that he's sincere about getting to the heart of the matter and not just doing the superficial music. Right. Because music becomes superficial if you don't put your heart into it. And John puts his heart into everything he does. Now, that similarity I can see, but... Uh, I've always been kind of like an airhead, and it's really sad because uh, it just seems like uh, my dad was a minister, and I got on my feet in the church when I was six years old, and uh, I've got over two and a half million people in sing-outs over the last 30, 40 years, and I've got 600 recordings in 77 nations on Whoa. my own. And I didn't even realize that until somebody told me. I'm just kind of, I've got so much air between my ears that sometimes I, I'm not as impressed as I should be 
about things. Yeah. Well, that's very good, Ray. When I yeah. see it. Sound like a very humble guy, Ray. Physical you, you, things of life just don't seem to get to me sometimes. You, you, know? ne you never got carried away with yourself, which is great. And that, unfortunately, that's not, not true of everybody. But uh, you obviously are a, a great man. I'd like to ask John, you've mentioned some other people that you've worked with who ha were performing with Elvis, including, I believe, DJ Fontana. Did I hear something yes, about that? Yes, absolutely. I mean, this is really, as Ray will tell you, a very, very spiritual and a very meaningful project. It's like a freight train that's unstoppable. And uh, we have literally everybody that ever played with Presley, most of which that are still around, some have passed, as Ray have told you, a couple of the Jordanaires, Neil Matthews uh, and Gordon Stoker. Uh, but we have DJ Fontana, Who's Elvis' the drummer? very first drummer, who actually Elvis saw play on the Louisiana Hayride. DJ sat me down in the studio and explained to me how Elvis met him. That's how special this is. Elvis' first drummer is still rocking, still playing on some of our recordings. We're scheduling him to play on some of these new songs, which is playing beneath us in the next couple of months. That, the original group, I believe, at Sun Records was... Elvis and Scotty Moore on Bill Black uh, and Bill Black on bass and Scotty Moore on guitar and then the following year DJ Fontana uh, became the drummer which was really the first kind of real rock band those four guys Elvis playing rhythm guitar and singing now Scotty Moore I know has passed away did you ever get a chance to meet him or uh They've tried to get him into the studio, but he's had a couple strokes, and he, he knows is he still, about me. Is he he's still, still alive. alive. Oh, I thought, oh yeah, absolutely. I, th I thought he had passed. But okay. uh, unfortunately, I don't think we're going to hear Scotty play, but uh, as Ray Walker will tell you, and he's told many media outlets about me and this project, and just a month ago said to Fox News that we've been telling John to hurry up for years, and, and he's about, I won't say how old he is, he could tell you that, but uh, it's really very special, and, and we are hurrying up, and a lot of producers in Memphis and Hollywood producers recently have become extremely interested in what we're doing, and that's been the message, get John in the studio, and they all started calling the musicians, and Norbert Putnam, an, another new player who played bass on over 130 of Elvis's tracks, has started calling all the musicians and the TCB band, and they're all coming back together to come sing and play with us on We've started several new tracks just in the last three weeks. What about the Sweet Inspirations? Because I know, I know they toured with Elvis in they're, the 70s. They're, they're already on many of these songs. Even Myrna Smith, the originals, uh, passed about two years ago, and she's on several of these new recordings. We have, prior, prior to the last three weeks, new sessions and new songs, we started nearly 50 new tracks, new songs, the first of their kind since Elvis passed. It's Really a very, very powerful and, message. And you also wanted to men mention Shane Keister, right? Shane Keister is an amazing piano, piano player. He's playing uh, in that new song. That Tom, i got to say this. Don't you feel fortunate? We're here sitting in a studio. John Crondis is here. We're playing his songs. The return of the Memphis sound is clear. He's been able to assemble a hit Elvis hit-making team and bring back this sound that has been... Dormant, inactive, dead since Elvis died on August 16th, 1977. And now it's back. And now we have it back. We have the Jordan Airs. We have members of the Elvis band. We have the songwriters that wrote Elvis songs. And it's all being put together. Here's a song that I love that I think epitomizes the Memphis sound and how John Crondis and the others are bringing it back. I think we have time to play it in full. There goes my
As my memory turns back the pages I can see the happy years we had before Now the love that kept this old heart beating Has been shattered by the closing of the door Tom, we have time for one more song from the Elvis hit-making team led by John Crondis. On this song, we have Shane Keister on piano, along with the Jordanaires singing. And the song is from the musical Carousel by Rodgers and Hammerstein with that unmistakable Memphis sound. You'll never walk alone.
Wow, what a show it's been. Tom, we've been here with John Crondis on his show, learning all about the Elvis hit-making team, the history, the Jordan Airs, Elvis's band members. We've heard several songs. Uh, we definitely want to find out more about this Memphis sound that John is bringing back. And I know you, the listeners out there, want to, would want to get in touch with him and other members of the band. Uh, John, what's the best way that people can communicate with you? Please connect with us uh, on Facebook, probably the fastest, quickest, one of the most popular methods of uh, communication today, either John Crondis or Elvis Hitmaking Team on Facebook. We'd love to hear from you. Great. Thanks, John. I'm just going to spell your last name for our listeners, K-R-O-N-D-E-S. And thanks, Tom, for being my co-host. I'm Francisco. Till the next time. Yeah.